Good afternoon. Uh, I'd like to call this uh, Committee of the Whole meeting for Wednesday, April 24th to order. Uh, it's 3 p.m. exactly. Um, we have an amended agenda here today, um, fresh off the press. Uh, do we have any, any other changes or amendments or anything to add? No? No? Can I have a motion to adopt the amended agenda? Moved, seconded. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you very much. Um, we have no appointments or delegations today. Uh, we have no new business under item four, so we're moving on to item five. 5.1, fees and charges by law. First uh, recommend or motion to receive the report from the manager of financial services. Moved, seconded. All those in favor? Thank you very much, that carries. And we're gonna pass it over to Mr. Curry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The district's application and copy fees are currently administered under the application and copying fees bylaw 333 that was established in 1998. The fees in bylaw 333 have not been updated since 2011. It is common for a municipality to have one fees and charges bylaw to centralize all for user fees for the organizations. With having the fees centralized to one bylaw, staff can provide the review of fees in accordance with the financial plan during budget deliberations each year. Today we're bringing forward a review and update of the fees in bylaw 333 and we're recommending to add new fees for services. We recommend the costs for these services are recovered through the addition of the new fees. The proposed fees have been set up to recover costs for each of the services and to compare with other municipalities. Each of these fees are a user pay system where an individual or business has requested an additional service from the district and pays for the according costs. Service costs include staff time and overhead uh, for as indirect costs. The finance and administration fees um, in today's report are set up that homeowners are not charged for general requests for the property information. However, prior year information and reconciliation of information are charged at, at $60 an hour. The same for tax certificates and for pre-authorized payments. We, we've added a, a charge to banks for maintaining the mortgage listings, which is um, typical for um, a, a typical service charge for municipalities to the bank. The revenue estimated for um, charging these mortgage listings to the banks would be approximately $15,000 a year. So we um, would maintain the information on the property tax accounts on behalf of the banks each year. Um, it's typical to charge them per listing when they request the information uh, to pay property taxes on behalf of the banks and mortgage companies. Another new char change is that we've added interest um, charges for accounts receivable accounts. This is our general accounts receivable uh, for interest owed for uh, accounts uh, past due, 30 days past due for say um, mortgage or lease lease revenue. Um, the, this would be approximately one, or this would be 1.5% per month or 18% per year for the interest. And the estimated revenue impact would be approximately $5,000 per year. The RCMP administration fees proposed are for cost recovery. The current fees are well under cost for services and the proposed fees would ensure that users pay for the services rendered. It costs the district on average $45 per hour for clerical staff, including the cost for benefits. The fees have considered staff time and administration, administrative overhead. At this time, we're looking for discussion and feedback from the committee to gather what may be required to bring this forward to council. The committee may choose to endorse some, all, or none of the fees. I do believe in order to fully recover costs associated with administration, development, planning, and related services, uh, um, it is recommended that the fees be updated by the amounts outlined in the report. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, questions from Council? Councillor McLean, you've got some notes there. Yep. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm going to page 24 into the planning uh, fees. Uh, New, the new agenda number, I believe, if I did my work right. Appendix four. Yes. Okay, so um, looking at the OCP amendments and the zoning amendments, very similar fee structures for both. 
And then when you get into a combined OCP and zoning amendment, the two differences are the base fee goes from 25 up to 3,000, and the limit goes from either 10 or 20 up to 30. Um, is there not additional cost to processing both at the same time rather than just OCP or just zoning? Because the incremental amount is still the same. Through the chair, with, with a combined OCP and zoning bylaw amendment, it recognizes that we usually do the hearings at the same time and the reports at the same time. So in terms of the incremental cost, it's, it's not arithmetic. It's, um, it, it recognizes that. So it's a little bit different on there. If we were, it's unusual to just do an OCP amendment with no corresponding zoning bylaw amendment. It can happen, but it's not often, um, because usually what they want to do is change the designation to support a zoning bylaw amendment. So that's why it's kind of structured that, that way. It recognizes we roll in a lot of the activity on the combined. All right. Thank you. Anybody else? Mayor Seegers. So my page numbers are going to be off because I did these on the old one. So I can tell you where we're at. Okay, so start at, there we go. No, previous. Uh, this is under financial services proposed fees, property tax certificates. So this would be in appendix one, page Three. Page five, it says at the top. I don't know. Property tax certificates, current year, it says registered owners, no charge. And then below that, it says registered owners and other parties, $40. So how do we determine what's the difference? Sorry, I'm just having to think. I, I've, mm -hmm. I just answered this question the other day, actually, to Doug. Um, Oh, so this would be if it was a registered owner, it would be um, in addition to they get one per year. So in some cases, they require it for their bank um, on an annual basis than if they required an, an additional one. And uh, the manual, um, per certificate manual, means it's over the counter. So there's a bit more effort towards uh, most of the uh, uh, realtors and uh, lawyers nowadays are all with BC Online. So certificates are pulled through BC Online for $25, so this would be just a manual effort to have to either fax or email, um, and then also do the billing for it, so that's the $40 there. Okay, so we might want to have more clarity in this, because okay. as a registered owner, I wouldn't know, is it no charge or is it $40? What am I paying? Okay, well, yeah, we can we can clarify that. For, for additional certificate, perhaps? Yeah, maybe for, for additional certificate. <laughs> Um, and then online is $25. They do that themselves or we do that? They do that themselves. So the billing's done through BC Online and they remit the funds to us on a monthly basis. It's so is this, this isn't something that we would do? That we set the fees. The $25 fees for BC Online are set by us, but then um, it's administered through the BC Online system. They so we're so they, we're using our we're using our BC online to generate it for them, and charging them twenty five dollars to do it. We they use our database, so they access our database at the back door. So they have access to our current okay. property tax information, and then BC online is its own system yeah. um, that they use that they're set up for billing. Or that's not through us, but BC online remits the funds to us. Okay. Um, and then the bottom of that page says mortgage company listing, and I think you were referring to that, but I don't know what this is. So mortgage company listing is we add a mortgage number to different properties where the uh, mortgage company or the bank pays on behalf of the homeowner, so they'll remit the taxes, and uh, we maintain that data. So it's it's typical that a municipality would um, charge per listing back to the bank. So we're we're providing this bank this service free of charge to the banks right now it causes additional um, additional work for staff so this would be an opportunity to to uh, offset those costs so is this something that somebody reading this would actually understand what they're what this is about 
Yeah, yeah, this is the same <laughs> Sorry, language. I thought their bylaws. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so I mean, I work in that field, and I have no idea what you're talking about there. Okay, um, a couple more pages down. Interest and arrears under utilities for water. So for, right at the top of that page, it's page seven at the top. It says in online. It's page ten. Page ten. The okay. Agenda. Under penalties. So it's property taxes penalty. It's got that there. Then utilities for water, sewer, and garbage user fees. There's a 10% penalty or a 10% discount if paid on within 30 days. How does that work? This this was added to provide us the option if we, and, and it does need a bit of clarity um, for the bylaw. If we decided to go with a, a system with utilities to have an option for a 10% discount, so the discounted rate would then equal the, the normal rate for utilities for garbage or sewer. Um, it just gave us another option to do the billing. So it works as a nice incentive instead of saying there's a 10% penalty on the invoice. This is um, you pay within 30 days to get the 10% discount. A lot of municipalities have moved in this direction with utility billing. So what you're saying is what we would charge them based on our regular bylaw. They, if they pay it on time, they get a 10% discount? It, it wouldn't reduce the fee. The 10% discount would be to remain at the same fee. So it's it's the opposite of the penalty. So if, if you had to pay, um, if your, your rate was normally $200 and um, we said, okay, we'll pay within, um, we, we send you the bill for $220 and say pay within 30 days and it's $20. It's a penalty in disguise. Yep. Councillor McLean. I, I think I'm following you. Um, so essentially you're presenting two options. Um, that's that's correct. It gave us the option if we decided to separate the utilities um, on its own invoice from the tax notice because they're currently on the tax notice. So just gave us an option in the future. It, it can it can be removed or it can be uh, written so that it's better or e easier to understand. Okay. My preference would personally be the ten point ten percent discount mode, um, but since it is on the property notice currently. I'd be more inclined to just remove the whole thing. I don't know how the rest of the committee thinks. So how would we communicate this given that our utilities for water, sewer, and garbage are part of our budgeting and people know what they are, but then when they get their bill, it would actually be higher than what we'd actually put in our budget. That, so this, this change wouldn't happen with... Um, with any decisions today it would happen down the road so it was it was more for discussion to say um it for an opportunity in the future so we would we would have to change our actual bylaw um and a few other things that, with this so this wouldn't it just provided us an option in the future if we decided to go down the road of um removing the penalty and adding the discount but we can wait until we we get there to add this it if you might like be advisable <laughs> Do we want to just take a quick vote on removing this section from the fees? Sure. All those in favor of removing it? I'm too confused. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you have other questions? Or are you? No. Okay. 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 Business license, license listing. So $35 <laughs> for a business license, license listing. Is this on our website, or where does this go? This is if um, um, someone came across the counter and requested a listing of our business licenses. It's available. It's public information. Um, this would cover staff time to pull the listing, um, whether we email it electronically or provide it on um, hard copy. But this this could be requested by the chamber to confirm active business licenses. This can be requested by... Um, someone coming to town wanting to know the list of active restaurants. Um, so that we do, I did ask staff, and we do get this, this request three or four times a year. Okay, so when I read this, I thought it's listing it. So a business license listing, when I read this, it was that we would do a listing of the business on our website or something, and we were charging $35. So what I'm hearing you say, it's a listing of business licenses. That's, that's correct. It's the complete listing. You right. could request it based on the type or by just getting all. And so so I would request you change the wording. So it's a listing of business licenses, okay. not a list you know, business license listing. Okay. Right? 
Um, and then it's per listing or per document that you're looking Per, per document, not okay. per listing. So it says per listing electronics. We want per document or per electro electronic document. Just a quick follow-up question on that one. Um, the City of Vancouver and other municipalities uh, offer it available within their open data portal. Do we have any option for residents to self-serve pull that information? Yeah, yes, we do, and we had it available. Um, I believe just over a year ago where there's a business license index through our online portal for property information and they re I'm not sure when it was taken down but the the data wasn't reliable and the addresses that were being shown were connecting to mailing addresses and not the civic addresses of the businesses so um, I just spoke to Beverly this afternoon about it and um, we're going to just uh, poke the our software company to see where they're at. They were meant to fix it, and I think it, we may have just uh, let the the glitch slide so that uh, it would be nice to have that available. So it would be an index that you're able to search local businesses, and that would be available for free. So you wouldn't be getting any, it wouldn't um, cause any ex additional work to do it so that there wouldn't be a charge for it. Perfect, yeah, so this is just for staff time recovery for pulling it together for somebody who comes in off the street to ask for it, basically. That's correct, yeah. Okay. Anybody else? You, have, you got, well, no, go for it. Okay, list of electors. Are they actually available any other time but at election time? What page? Um, I don't know, I have page 16. I, I believe they're available at any time, but they're usually only requested during election time. Bottom of page 18. <laughs> page 18, okay. Yep. It says provided at no charge. So I thought it was only available at election time. I can make a note to check with uh, our corporate officer to ensure that if it's, we know whether it's available only at the during the season or if it's all the time. Because when we're given it at the election, like when we pick up our documentation, mm -hmm. put our we we are we have to bring it back and turn it back in. Right. Okay, I'll I'll double check that if there needs to be a time added here. Okay, I think that's all I had. No, I had more. Letter of comfort. This is under Appendix Four. Page 25. Thank you. 25. Page 25. Thank you. 26. 26. 26. Okay. Letter of comfort, page 26. Letter of comfort, base fee, $150, and then it's per lot. Do we do a per, per lot? Okay. It should be per request. Okay. So instead of per lot. Uh, same, that was OCP zoning confirmation letter. So there's two of them. Research, research beyond OCP and zoning, $350 per lot as well. That'll be per request as well then. Through the chair, usually it's, uh, um, often it's done on a, on a parcel because when they ask for this, it's usually before there's been any subdivision. So um, it usually is just one parcel. Um, most of them will fall within they're looking at OCP and zoning confirmations. We have had some requests where it's either a difficult property um, with some history on it, um, and it requires going through a lot more of um, previous council uh, decisions on it or failed uh, stops and starts, shall we say, on, on some of them. And for very large scale, it's a lot of work to put this together. So it was to give us an opportunity for when on those few occasions, and there really aren't that many, um, where it's over and above to allow us to collect on that. But I can clarify the, the metric on that. Yeah, it, I mean, if it, if it should be per lot, then it should be per lot. But if it's, if it's not, then we just need okay. more clarity there. Councilor McLean. <coughs> um, within the administration section, there's an area for additional research requests filled out at $60 an hour. That's not included in the planning section. Is that 
an intentional omission? Like everything in planning is essentially flat rates um, or scaled for the size of the development, not for the amount of time put in. Um, is that something council would like to look at? Or, OK. Um, you mean in terms of cost recovery on staff time? Yeah, it's very clear under administration that if they're doing additional research requests, we bill out at $60 an hour. Planning does not have that. I could see it adding up quite substantially. So I'm wondering if there is any concerns from the staff side on that. Through the chair, um, it may make sense because when I was doing the planning ones, I wasn't privy to the administrative staff. It may make sense to have um, under miscellaneous something that aligns with that or references back that we could do where we just bill out on that hourly rate. If you think of terms of analyzing for the rates themselves on hourly, we'd never come to cost recovery. We just wouldn't. Um, what I tried to do with, with the majority of them was to, to scale it on level of effort and reflect the number of times we're going to official meetings, so the APC uh, and the number of council meetings. A lot of the fees actually reflect the public notification and public hearing fees. Um, but if we actually looked at staff time, yeah, we wouldn't come close. Councilor McLean? Yeah, I think we can leave it as is, given <laughs> that, um, and keep the flat rates so we're not getting rates out of hand. OK. Um, anybody else have questions, concerns? Com oh, Councilor McLean. OK, so I do have a concern that would be for the council table to discuss. Um, agendas. Yeah. Page, um, page 11. Um, currently, we do provide agendas for free. Um, but I recognize it's a lot of wasted paper, potentially. Um, so I see the logic in charging photocopying fees for agendas. But I think that's a core service that we should be providing as a district of Seashell. So I would like that removed. And we can look at other measures to reduce cost of printing agendas, but we cannot charge citizens to view agendas. I'm going to speak to that too, but go ahead first, Mayor Seegers. I wonder how many copies we get, how many copies we requested to print. Is it five? Is it 500? Do you have an idea? Can, can I get it? Yeah, I, I don't really like this approach of charging for agendas, um, printed agendas either. Uh, I, I've Not everybody is technologically inclined or connected or able to download them for, you know, you can download them for free, you can load them on an iPad, that's great if you're set up to do that, if you've got internet, if you've got the means to do it. Um, I just I think that charging for agendas uh, reduces access to government for people, um, and I would be in favor of removing that charge. Did you want to speak further? Or anybody else want to? Oh, yeah. I just I did answer this question just this morning, and there is a council policy that um, states that the community associations receive three copies of each of the council agendas and committee um, minutes. Um, so we, we are um, recommending that in the new bylaw that um, would come forward would have a provision to um, that council resolution, by council resolution or by council policy, um, you would supersede the, by, the charges in here. So if your, your policy states that community associations and so on and so on, receive these copies of these agenda minutes. You can con control it through that. And, and we still have this available at the front um, just to kind of more police anyone who may be wasting paper or wasting staff resources. Um, that's not, so you, you have the, the opportunity still in that policy to control who receives the copies. Because like some of these agendas can get rather large. And if we're wanting to become more paperless, this is a, a preventative measure so that not anyone can come off the street and ask us to print these off all the time. 
Okay. Is that policy currently in place? It, yes, it is. Okay. For the community associations. Um, what about residents that are coming in that may not be tied to a community association? Is it within that policy or? I, I don't believe it is, no. Okay. Hmm. Anybody else want to speak? Go ahead, Mayor Seegers. I know that we've we've been talking about going paperless upstairs. I mean, it's a huge cost to print all of these documents out and then store them. So, and a lot of them actually come to us electronically. We work electronically. Um, I think I'd like to see how many copies we actually. I mean, if it's six that we print, not a big deal. But if we have a lot of people in the community who just come because they're used to using paper and they want to continue to use paper, maybe there's another alternative for some of them. Do we want to leave it in? <laughs> Go ahead, Councillor McLean. I think we're ready for a vote. I move that uh, the there is no fees for agenda. Printed agendas? Printed agendas. Okay. Oh. All those in favor of doing that? Three? Oh, four. Opposed? One, two, three. Okay. That carries. Okay. Um, anybody else wanting to speak to anything in here? Over here. Over here. All right. Councillor McLean. Custom research. I brought it up before. Um, uh, this is going to. It's referenced a couple times, but I'm going to start on page 14. Yep. In the new yes. agenda. So, if everyone's there, uh, custom research. Um, first 15 minutes are free. Minimum charge of forty dollars, sixty dollars per hour. Um, I like this. Um, and I'd like to see it applied throughout um, the fees bylaw. Um, there's a couple places where we mentioned the hourly rate, um, but I'd really like to see the first 15 minutes free for district services. Um, I think it makes the government more able to respond to needs of citizens for a quick request to say that, yes, you can make a quick request We'll get it done in 15 minutes and we won't charge you. Um, it works here, but there's several other places where um, there's not that free, free time of requests. Um, is staff following what I'm yeah, applying yeah, to? Absolutely, yeah, okay. we, can, we can see how that, how that applies through. There is, it is in a couple other areas, the same thing, but I'll make sure it is added to each of the different um, tables. Well, I'd, and, okay, if staff is following, no, I'd like to speak to council. <laughs> is that something that council would like to implement is 15 minutes free of staff time because that is resources. Mayor Seegers. I think I'd like to see where it is mm -hmm. and what the impact is. Go ahead. Most of the stuff we're doing for free already. Um, so we're talking about implementing fees and rather than just straight up putting them in for everything like we are now, because a lot of the services are free. I'm saying put in the fees, but give the first 15 minutes free. You can do a lot of printing in 15 minutes. I'd uh, still like to see what they are because our staff time is costly. Yep, for sure. So I'd like to see what that is. It might be that it is a bunch of small things, but it can take up a whole day. So let's see where it is impacted in here. And have that come back at a later date. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure what you're asking, but as long as you understand and staff understands, I'm happy for it to come back. Yeah, absolutely. Whatever is decided today, if this is supported, um, we could bring it back with the um, proposed bylaw. Okay. Do you want to speak more to that? Or? Yeah. Um, well, 
do you know specifically where what sections we'd be looking at um, in terms of this first 15 minutes type option or if, would you like some direction from us on which sections I I could definitely apply it where I think it should be that you, if you turn to page 15 um, custom request for a GIS or mapping that can be a common one that can get out of hand quickly so um, that one has for first 15 minutes or free um, with a minimum charge of $40 uh, you'll, you'll see it added on a few areas um, we, we can definitely we'll just take a second look at them if, if we're bringing this forward again and consider where it could be applied okay I think does that seem reasonable Councillor McLean yeah absolutely but just so we're all on the same page page seven um, there's two sections where this hourly rate applies and these are the ones that I re another one that I do have concern with per hour rate is $60 minimum charge is $30 so if you have a five minute request still costs a citizen $30 um, so that's on tax and utility account information tax and utility notice reprints um, moving on to the next page there's property tax certificates um, from prior years $60 per hour minimum if we can get it done in 15 minutes I don't want to charge for that kind of stuff Mayor Seegers is that something that they can get access to if they're if they go online through our self-serve portal yeah absolutely and we have a, a kiosk with a computer at the front reception area that will suggest people can sit down and log in and look at their their tax information and once you've set up online you can look at your prior year transactions and in the case with the property taxes if someone requires a further reconciliation whether it's like i need to know the last 10 years of tax payments and homeowner grants claimed on my property it may require further time and and likely more than 15 minutes already so that's why their 15 minutes are free wasn't added there so um, if it's we're already providing the 15 minute service for free at the reception desk um, generally and then if it ask, if it goes further than that it's someone in the back is having to to take a look and sit down reconcile the account in some instances sit down with the customer and then provide an explanation for the, the what, what's happened on the account so what you're saying is even for these prior years for property tax certificates, they could actually sit down at our counter upstairs and access it and print it they, or email it to themselves? They, they can't, act, they can't um, a tax certificate is more of a, a legal legal document, but they can access their, their information. So their transaction listing of all the ins and outs. So the tax charges each year and their payments and the, the dates associated with those. So someone could look at their own account and look at their own tax detail on their own at no charge. Yeah, I, prior years I, I use my online portal all the time to pull up what I've paid in the past. Um, I don't know. Thoughts? I don't, you know, current year, no charge, that makes sense. Prior years, I there's not a lot of places that'll help you out with historical stuff for free in this world. Um, you know, poor planning or poor records keeping, records management on an individual's, you know, at, at their house. It's not, not our fault that they've lost their paperwork. <laughs> but, I don't know. I agree. It's, you, you can't, we just can't save people from themselves. <laughs> Okay. Anybody else? Councillor Cooster. I agree too. Like if it's stuff that we're going back looking for historically, I think they need to be charged for that. I mean, obviously current stuff, we can look at that, but anything going back, yeah, definitely. So we do have a, f oh, go ahead, Councillor McLean. <laughs> Uh, sounds like I'm in the minority here then okay. and we'll just leave the two sections that have the first 15 minutes free um, for GIS mapping and custom research um, and then I'm just looking through the list I think those are the mo two most important ones to provide that quick service free so 
let's leave it. Okay. I mean, we can take a quick vote on it if you want, but no? Okay. I see where we're heading. Can Mayor Seeger? Oh. Go ahead. Through the chair, often with the, the plan in the planning world on that of doing custom research, um, mapping, that sort of thing, it is unusual that we would ever charge under half an hour, an hour. Um, where we wanted to have a charge, really just to put some discipline in the system, is when we get often out-of-town realtors <laughs> um, who want a lot of background, a lot of information, they don't understand Seashelp, um, it is enormously time-consuming, and that's to support someone else's business. Um, so on ones like that, we wanted an ability to be able to put something in, but I can assure you we don't stand there with a timer and say, sorry, that was 17 minutes, you're up. Um, <laughs> it, it, we really do give benefit of the doubt on that, but we have come across ones where, yeah, it's just really, you know, had they, had they done a little bit of Google search, they probably would have gotten what they needed, but it, it takes hours in some cases. So that was a thought process behind on the planning stuff. Thank you. Mayor Seegers? Could we look at the uh, refund of the account balances for the pre-authorized payments? It's page nine of the amended agenda. I've got page eight. <laughs> okay. So we've got a number of different uh, scenarios, right? If they sell the property, we retain $40, they get the rest of their property taxes back that they've put in. For an overpayment, no charge. Non pre-authorized payment, 25% of the refunded balance. When would they actually, if they're not doing that, when would that actually happen? Like, what balance are we giving them back? Um, this isn't the case where they've overpaid um, or made a, a, a mistake on the uh, on paying the wrong property tax account. So it, it would just be a, a, a double payment or an overpayment on the account, or in some instances, um, that if they've claimed their homeowner grant and also paid the equal amount of their taxes due, then there's a, a credit on the account. Okay, and our policy is twenty five percent of the amount that's on the regular accounts receivable accounts? Yeah, of the of the refunded balance. So if they if yeah, for five hundred dollars, yeah, we would take the twenty five percent of it. It's it's more um, to prevent them from requesting it to leave the funds on the account. It's not likely that they will unless there's other circumstances, but um, the same thing uh, it, it's more of a prohibitive to to the, us issuing the refunds. So if someone o overpays or um, the same thing with the pre-authorized payment for $40, um, we have a lot of people make mistakes on forgetting to turn off their pre-authorized payments and they have to self-manage these because we don't understand, we're not aware when their property sells. So we get a lot of these refund requests um, and they tie up staff time. There's someone who has to adjust the property tax account and then someone has to issue the check and this cost us money at someone else's mistake. Um, and the same thing on this side, it's, it's someone else's mistake. We're not looking to take a percentage of their money that's owed to them, but we're just wanting them to leave the money where it is. So could we add where it's got uh, pre-authorized payments for the registered owner after sale of property only, could we also put non-pre-authorized payments there as well at $40 and separate it Upon sale, yeah, doesn't matter if yeah. you're pre-authorized payment or not. Yeah, we'll charge you forty dollars flat. Yeah, absolutely. To get that piece done, and then this other, I can understand where if they've. I think I can understand, <laughs> but it would differentiate right between them. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Because that's a different case than what you're talking about. If it's a sale, then we would refund. Mm -hmm. But if if it's not, then it's an error that's been happening that they need to get cleared up and it costs us more time to get mm -hmm. sorted out. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 
Councilor McLean. Uh, onto a planning question. So page 24, appendix four. So question towards staff. Um, under zoning amendments, um, there's a section for secondary suite successfully de dwelling units. Is that an additional charge? So if it's a separate charge, if you're just doing one additional uh, secondary suite or accessory dwelling. Correct. Through the chair, the intention there was to um, keep it reasonable uh, if, and actually to promote it. So if someone wants to do an accessory dwelling unit or a secondary suite and they need to do a rezone for it, that we keep it at a, at a pretty reasonable rate on it. Um, so that was the intention there. Um, also on, on that, with anything falling under DPA 8, when you see it in development permits, that was a reduction for the same reason, to encourage um, people to, to do that kind of intensive residential. It's a much lower fee. OK, follow up. I, oh, there it is. Never mind. <laughs> Anybody else? I don't have any other notes either. Just wait and I see a head shake down that end of the table. Councillor Lamb? You're good? Mayor Seegers? Page 26, bottom of page of the appendix four. Is this new then? Consolidate two lots or alter property line between two lots 750? And that's minimal too to let them clean things up? the top of the last page of appendix four page, page 27 in the yeah through the chair when we're doing something like that it doesn't require any servicing agreements or anything so the it really it covers um the 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 staff uh report or actually the, the file review and registering in land titles um, but it's usually fairly straightforward in in terms of that level of activity there's not a lot to negotiate. Fair enough. Thank you. Okay. Do you want to just leave your microphone on? Okay. Well, I think... Councillor Rowe, do you have any questions, comments? Okay. No? Mayor Seegers, you're okay? Okay. So we have a Councillor McLean. I will move recommendation two that uh, bylaw 333 be repealed and the new f fees and charge bylaw be brought forward with the proposed fees as presented. And amended. And amended here. Yeah. Seconded. <clears throat> Any other discussion on it? Or? No? All those in favor? Thank you. Nobody right. opposed? That carries. Thank you very much. <coughs> Um, that's it. Um, motion to adjourn. Oops, seconded. All in favor? Great. Thank you very much. Can they text me in? No. <laughs>